Last year in the 2023 hiking season, um, I started out on trail with the Z-Pax Arc Hall 65 Ultra. And it pretty much checked all the boxes for me. Now I, I have in the past purchased a, aerobic uh, Arc Hall. I think it was a 55. And I had problems with that pack and I went away from it and started using other packs, kept the pack, I still have it today. And bought this pack and on trail I had the same problems as the first pack I bought. And that is Z-Pax uses half inch webbing and buckles. And in my opinion, that's not gonna, it's just not up for the job, okay? Um, the problem I had with both packs is uh, going down trail every, literally every 10 or 15 minutes, I constantly have to tighten my webbing, my straps, constantly. And it is frustrating and, 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 uh, and very annoying. And so, um, and I was hoping they would have fixed the problem. I actually uh, contacted them years before about the problem and guess, guess what their answer was? Well, we'll send you some new uh, half inch webbing. Uh, that's not gonna fix the problem, Z-Packs. <laughs> I'm not hating on Z-Packs. Um, I like, actually like the company. I have several of their Dyneema tents, but I'll never ever buy another backpack from them again until they fix this problem. Uh, what they need to do is offer an option on the, on the pack, and that is a three quarter inch or one inch webbing buckle option when you purchase your pack. And that would solve that problem completely. Um, so if this if Z packs, if this ever makes it to you, please, please listen to me. Um, I'm never going to buy another one of your packs until this is fixed. So I got it tied while last season and went into the outfitters in Isle while and promptly sh shipped this home. Um, I really wish this worked out for me because it's a, it's a, it's a good pack otherwise. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and bought in the outfitter, the ULA catalyst aerobic version. This is their great pack. It's heavier than the Z packs product, but this thing has three quarter inch webbing never slipped on me once I've had 40 plus pounds in this and yeah, it's, it's a beast. Uh, the weight is still very manageable. Um, and this is what I finished out my, my hike with last year was the, uh, this, this pack here. Then, um, ULA came out with an ultra 200 version of their packs and they put some improvements on the pack and I, I immediately jumped on it because it's actually lighter. They actually were able to cut weight by using the ultra 200 product. And that's what this is. This is the ULA Catalyst Ultra. Um, as of today, I just checked the website. Uh, they actually have a 2024 version of this with some extra loops and a little more functionality they added to it. And it's right, I think it's right at $399. Um, so I've used this pack uh, once, it's basically brand new. Um, and this is what I'm gonna use in the 2024 hiking season. Uh, great pack. I think this is 70 liter or 75 liter. I think it's 75 liter. Um, now, I started in March. My, my start date was March 1st last year at Campo going north on the PCT. And I already knew I was gonna be hiking heavy because you know, you need warm clothes and otherwise you're gonna freeze. And we hiked with people that thought they were ultra light and they froze, okay? Um, I hiked with several people that wished they had bigger packs. So if I'm not using the full uh, capacity of this pack, no problem. I just crunch down the roll top pack and don't even worry about it. But I actually have the extra room if I need it, which is great. So this is what I'm using. 
I highly recommend this pack. It doesn't slip. It's still very, uh, still very nice, lightweight pack. Um, and that's what we're going with for the uh, next for the season. Uh, sleep system. Um, new for this year. This is the warmest blow up sleep pad on the market. This is the um, extreme conditions. Um, and yeah, it, I, I love the uh, fact that Nemo um, gives you this pump, uh, pump sack. This is my, my opinion, the best on the market. Um, so I'm using the, the Nemo extreme conditions, uh, regular wide, uh, with square. It's re a rectangle. So, um, I've tried it. It's a beautiful, beautiful pad. Very warm, obviously, um, not cheap. It's well into the $200 range. Um, and then what I use for my pillow, again, Z-Packs, blow-up pillow with a shock cord around it. And this is what I use to go around the pad and keep the pillow in place. Um, plastic, so what I do at the end of the day is I take my hiking buff off, slip it over as a, as a pillowcase, and it works beautifully. Uh, luxury item. It doesn't take very long with this pump sack to get this pad uh, inflated. It really doesn't. But I'm going to go ahead and take this on trail with me for a little while. This is the Flextail uh, Zero, this little pump here. Uh, very small, doesn't weigh much. I do have the bigger brother to this that I've, that I've bought before. Very loud, it's a little bit bigger. But uh, this thing works great. I've already tried it. So that's probably going to be a luxury item coming along with me. The next in my big three is my tent. Uh, again, Z-Packs, um, Ultiplex. This will be the first year that I've brought this out. Um, it is a big change from the My Duplex that I uh, love so much. And uh, But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pullouts on the, uh, on the outside of the tent to pull, to pull the, the volume out. So I get a little more room inside. And if you go to Z-Pack's website, you'll see these ultralight Dyneema cups that you put in the guy line and a stick or a, a, a pull will go in there and it'll give you tension and pull the, the sides out. That's what I'm using. Um, I'm using a ground sheet, a Tyvek ground sheet to protect the bathtub of the tent. And they tell you not, you don't need it. But let me tell you folks, this is, uh, you know, over $600 tent. And um, you, you, can, you can abuse it and, or, you know, what, however you like. I recommend a ground sheet with an expensive tent like this. Um, so yeah, that's that. And um, my next big three, is my quilt. This is the Catabatic Flex. Um, it is the six foot, six inch, I believe wide. Yeah, six foot, six inch wide. I am not six foot, six, six inches tall, but the reason why I get the extra length is I, uh, when I'm super cold nights, um, I like to pull this thing over my head and keep warm. And I got plenty of room to do that then. Uh, it has got four ounces of overfill in it, so it's really warm. I have the 22 degree version of this that I used on the PCT last year. And my start date was, well, March 1st. And it was very cold. Um, it was just warm enough if I put all my clothes on. Okay, I could, I could stay fairly warm. So this year I'm going to go a little warmer. A little heavier, of course, but it's the trade-off. Great thing about the Flex is the foot box. Uh, the foot, foot box can be closed up or opened up. So there's a zipper. And you can totally open the quilt up if you like. Or you can uh, zip the quilt up. And, and, you know, you can vary the length of it. And then the foot box will snap closed. There's the snap. 
and then you have the drop cord. So you can totally have a closed in, beautiful foot box if you, when I'm, I'm very cold nights. I'm not a particular, I'm not a like, I'm a normal sleeper I would consider myself. I'm not hot or cold. Um, I might run a little warm. So I like to open this up and get my feet a little more regulated. Um, catabatic um, gear is, is wonderful. It's very, very high quality, not cheap. You get, you get what you pay for though. So I recommend the catabatic uh, products. Okay, more items for the 2024 hiking season. Um, recommendations, you take what you like, it's up to you. But um, we'll go ahead and again, excuse the uh, intrusion, I'm gonna be working around the items to show, so just bear with me. Okay. Let's just start out in the front. Um, poop kit. This is usually what I do every year. Um, trowel for digging cat holes. Anything works. I mean, I don't know why people are, right? The deuce, the deuce of spades or the deuce number two. Um, I'm a big fan of dried out baby wipes. I go ahead and I go to Costco, buy a case of baby wipes, lay out a few packages, maybe a couple, three, let them dry out. Then I vacuum seal them to turn into a much thinner, stiff brick. They weigh nut, they're very lightweight once they dry out. Very robust, you can clean yourself thoroughly with this product. Uh, again, you're not allowed, really you need to pack out everything except your liquid and human solid waste. That's the only thing you leave behind. These will not degrade, they're, they have plastic components in them. They'll stay out there forever. So if you do go down the route of baby wipes like I do, pack them out, okay? Please pack out all your uh, toilet paper and toiletries. And I'm also a big fan of these compressed bathroom towels. Oops, excuse me. And uh, I also use these also on trail. You can get these on Amazon. Um, to, as a pack out bag, go to your Walmart or any of your pet stores and get yourself a little case of doggy bags. They're usually scented, they come in different colors, they weigh very little. You pull one of these baggies out, you can put your used baby wipes or toilet paper in there and then you can pack them out and throw them away when you get into town. Okay, real simple. Oh, and one last item, uh, hand sanitizer. So it's a real basic poop kit, works great, I love it. Been doing this for several years. Okay, water filtration system. Um, this is uh, obviously a big deal. Uh, I've used Sawyer products, Sawyer squeeze products, and Be Free uh, the last few years. And I've had problems with both of them for some strange reason. Last year I started at Campo in March going north. And I don't know, the first 100 miles or maybe a little bit more, both Be Freeze failed on me. And I tried everything to clean them and the, the basically flow went down to a trickle. And so I went ahead and bought a Sawyer Squeeze, the full size one, and hiked several more hundred miles and it worked great. And I don't, I, you know, I don't understand why some of them fail. I've also had Sawyer Squeeze fail on me, trying everything to get them to, to, to restore the flow, but nothing, it was just a, barely drops would go through for some strange reason. So this year, um, I'm going to be taking this, the Canuck two liter uh, bag. This is the X version. It's a slightly thicker, a little more robust. Um, if you do poke a hole in it, use a repair uh, Terex um, type of pa uh, patch on it. it. You can repair this many times and still have it functional. I will be taking the Sawyer Squeeze. Yep, great product. Um, now I am gonna be taking backup. Um, so the backup is the Sawyer Micro. 
okay? Now, a lot of people hate on this thing, and I don't know why. Oh, it's slower, it doesn't have as, the exact same flow as the regular size. Well, if you, if you hold these two up and look at the ends, of course it doesn't have the same flow. It's close though, I've, it's just a little slower, not by much though. Look at the hole on the end where the water goes in. You, you, would, you can see this one's much bigger. Now, if you wanted to sacrifice one of these and drill this out and, and get this little extension part and make a bigger hole, you, you might have the same flow. I've been tempted to do that, but so that, that'll be back up in case the other one fails. Um, if you're going to be doing a long distance hike from like, uh, you know, the PCT, get yourself a real thin water bottle, cut it in half and crunch it down and make yourself a uh, water scoop. So what you do, I mean, this weighs nothing, folks. And what, what you do is, is you can scoop very thin water sources, very shallow, excuse me, very shallow water sources. I had to do that on the PCT last year um, near the windmills. We found a seasonal stream that was right and convenient and it was only this, you know, flowing this, <laughs> but we were able to collect, no problem. You collect and you put this in your Canuck bag and you filter and you're good. I'm also gonna be taking the Hydra Pack three liter uh, bladder. So uh, for, for bigger water carries, it's a li little bit of a, an item to carry, but uh, there was a section where I would have liked to have some more water. So I'm gonna be carrying that. There's my water uh, filtration. Okay, uh, hat, gloves, buff, outdoor research, fingerless sun gloves, highly recommended. It's all I use, uh, a buff. And if you like the baseball cap, from whatever one you choose, great. These, these work great. Um, but if you like a larger hat, like a boonie hat or something, I highly recommend this hat by Shelta. S-H-E-L-T-A, it's not a cheap hat, but it's got, it's, a, it's an awesome hat actually. This is the Condor, it's the widest brim hat that they make. It has a stiff bill on it. It comes with a chin strap that tucks away from behind. It's really, really a neat, it's waterproof, it floats. Um, awesome, look into this if, if you like the larger hat. Um, so that'll be my sun protection. Uh, no particular order for the older gentlemen that have to get up in the middle of the night to pee, a pee bottle. Um, if you don't want to go outside where it's cold and scary, you can pee in the tent. Ladies, you can do the same. Go, go on uh, Amazon and type in uh, ladies travel urinal and something like that. You'll see uh, several products and... You don't have to leave the tent either in the middle of the night to go pee. You can use a travel urinal inside your tent. You'll love it. Uh, head net. In my opinion, this is the best one on the market. It's the Sea to Summit head net. It has a, just a simple cinch. That's it. Great head net. Weighs almost nothing. Pack liner. I'm not going to use a pack cover this year, probably ever again. I'm just going to use uh, a pack liner. Um, this is not Nylofume, it's not very loud for, maybe you can figure out what the material is. I'm just going to keep it a secret, but you can get this on garage grown gear. Um, can't, I can't wait to use this. Anyways, okay, um, trekking poles, uh, Lecky. Makaloo FX Carbon, love these things. These are the three sectional ones, the ones that break down. Uh, yeah, use these on the PCT last year. Love these things, great. Get a pair of these or something similar. Headlamp, uh, years past I used the NU Nightcore NU25, the old and the new version of it. Um, the old version had the USB-A charging port. The new version, they, they messed with it hard. They gave it shock cord. Uh, they made it USB-C, but it's, 
the buttons and the settings are kind of confusing. Then they came out with this little, little guy. This is the Nightcore NU21. They simplified it. And this is what NU25 should have upgraded to. Uh, it has a USB-C charging port, so it's great. And it's real simple. This was like the old NU25s. One button for red, one button for white. Get, get the NU21. Highly recommended. Uh, Garmin Mini, InReach Mini. This is Gen 1. I don't have a problem with it. People are like, upgrade to Gen 2. I don't see why. It, yeah, the Gen 2 has a couple extra features. A little bit more of a battery life. But at the end of the day, when it needs to be plugged in to charge, I just plug it in and charge it. Uh, I like music on trail. So I'm bringing some sports earbuds. Um, I'm going to highly recommend this product. This is the Ola Dance. Uh, O-L-A-D-A-N-C-E Sport Earbuds. They just came out with this. Um, I recommend this product. As a matter of fact, the Ola Dance wireless earbuds are amazing. I don't recommend the third generation of them. The first two were great. The, OW, um, the OWS2s, I believe. Don't get the threes. They, I, I had to return them. But this I've, I've used, it works great. And they're basically waterproof. So, and, and they're like over the year around the back, they won't go anywhere. Okay, um, food storage. Last year I had basically this. This is the Light AF food bag. Works great, held all my food. Then I have my own uh, bear hanging kit that I made. Basically, it's just a, a small Dyneema uh, bag, some bear hang uh, slick line. You can, I, you, you can find this, just, like, just type in bear hang slick line, you can get a 50 foot section of it. Comes in different colors. A locking carabiner, make sure it's a small locking version. And an extra little Dyneema bag as my rock bag. And, uh, yeah, it works great. It's very lightweight. Um, so for, if you need a bear hang or hang it, your food bag somewhere, that's great. Um, hiked with a few people that had the Ursac bear bag. This is, I think, the XL version. It is a little heavy, but it will stop your food from being chewed on by maybe not bears, but things smaller than bears, chipmunks and maybe marmots and things. Um, it's, it's really a secure bag. Might take this, might not. I have it available. Um, it's up to you. Uh, okay. Uh, I, um, I like to have something to sit on, on trail. Uh, when I take a, uh, a pack rest, I'll take my pack off and I want, I want to sit down on something. So what I've done, these accordion style uh, sleep mats, I cut them down. And I cut it down to five sections. One, two, three, four, five. And I find that this is the perfect size to sit on, um, maybe even lay down on from my butt to my head, etc. I can put this underneath my blow-up pad so it stops it from sliding. Acts, uh, uh, gives the pad a little protection, maybe a little bit extra warmth. Um, I can use it as a staging pad. When I'm breaking down camp, I'll put this out and put all my stuff on it if, I, if I'm staging. Um, it's very flat when you cut it down to this size very flexible you, it molds very robust this this should last me the whole whole through hike that's what I recommend and um, okay um, so this stuff is for the Sierras and snow uh, what you see before you is the bear vault the 500 the 475 and the 450 plus the Camp Corsa uh, ice axe, plus micro spikes. Um, I, I'm not going to use the 500 probably ever again. Um, really, I don't see the, the real need for it. Um, well, what I'm going to be doing from now on is using the 475 with an overflow bag, okay? With an overflow bag, okay? So this and this, you're good to go. 
Um, much more manageable, much smaller. This is too small, in my opinion. This is good for, for, you know, a few days. But I believe that this one right here, uh, the 475 is what you should get. Um, if you want to get the 500 and deal with that beast, makes a great seat, so does this. Um, but I recommend the 475. This is the lightest uh, ice axe probably on the market. It's all aluminum. It won't last forever because it is aluminum, but I don't, I'm not gonna be doing mountaineering all the time, so I, I, I don't care. If you do get the Corsa, uh, make sure you get a ice axe leash. It's, it's almost useless, well not useless, but you, you run the risk of losing your ice axe, sliding down a, 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 a snowshoe or something. Get yourself the leash so, it does, so if, it does, if you do lose it, it won't go very far. Um, this is the, pretty much the standard, the Catula Micro Spikes. Uh, they are heavy. Um, great product. Uh, what I, I can also recommend the Black Diamond product. Very much lighter, a little bit smaller spikes. But these things are uh, super easy on and off. I highly recommend look into the Black Diamond product. I guess they're called distance spike. Um, yeah, I wear a size 13. These are the XL and they, they fit. They're a little, little, little snug, but that's what you want. So you um, can barely feel them. Great product. Okay, folks, that's about it. I hope you have fun in the outdoors like I do. Okay, well, before you are close, for the 2024 hiking season, jackets, clothes, shoes, socks, etc. Um, some brand new stuff, some stuff that I took last year. I thought I would share what I'm doing real quick. And um, again, I'm gonna be in the shot working around the uh, items to show you, so bear with me. Okay, uh, hiking shirts. Um, so I went ahead and bought the Jolly Gear hiking shirt. And um, I got it in and I thought this would be really cool to try out. I was very surprised at how heavy it is. Uh, it, it's a very substantial shirt. Beautiful, beautifully done. I mean, he, he didn't, he, he, he checked all the boxes, but it is probably the heaviest hiking shirt that I own. And it's got a great hood with cinch, ponytail hole. I love the color. The, the, I mean, when, you, when Jolly Gear first started out, they had some really uh, flamboyant colors, which to each his own. Um, it looks like it's bug proof or mostly bug proof. Uh, it is buttoned down. Um, I haven't taken this out uh, yet. I've tried it on. Uh, a couple times and walked around with it but um yeah it's 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 robust it's a, it's well made very well made don't know if i'm going to be doing a long haul with this like i said it's it's pretty heavy it does pack down though but it's a great product i might might be taking this on trail with me just to uh do a, a hundred miles or so with it maybe who knows it's open for uh Everything's open when you're on trail. Okay, uh, for a long time I've been a fan of the Outdoor Research Echo Sun Hoodie. Um, very lightweight, I mean, it, it's ultra light. Uh, love it, I have owned several of these, uh, different colors. Um, you know, I, I can highly recommend the Echo Sun Hoodie by Outdoor Research. And then online this year, someone uh, mentioned the Mountain Hardware Crater Lake hoodie or shirt and said it was actually a, uh, mo a more comfortable product. So that piqued my interest. And so I ordered Mountain Hardware uh, Crater Lake shirt. So it's not a hoodie. The only thing that's missing is the hood. It's the exact same shirt though. Uh, all of these have thumb holes, which I love. And sure enough, if you compare the fabric between the Outdoor Research Echo and the Crater Lake, 
I'd take the Crater Lake over the outdoor research. It, it is a much more luxurious feel. I mean, it's a beautiful product. So definitely taking the uh, Mountain Hardware product on trail with me. Um, for underwear, a couple, I'll be taking two pairs, one I'm wearing and a spare. Again, last year I took this on trail. These are a pair of thieves. And uh, you can get this at Walmart. Um, just, you know, go, go, go try this product out. Um, in women, you don't need to wear bikini cut hiking underwear all the time. I've, I've no women who wear men's underwear too because they don't want the bikini cut and not a problem. So pair of thieves. Uh, I, I like my setup where I have men's athletic leggings um, to protect my legs. Very lightweight. They protect my legs from abrasion, the sun, dirt. I actually stay uh, cleaner with these on. And then I pair it with a pair of uh, lightweight shorts, whatever, whatever happen, whatever that, you know, I, I happen to use. I found these at Costco. Costco brings in some really nice hiking, what I call hiking clothes uh, seasonally. This is a perfect pair of shorts in my opinion. It's got zippered pockets. It's got a tie front, very lightweight. And there's no underwear inside. Just incredible, per per perfect and very affordable by the way. Uh, this year I'm going to be taking some pants with me for the first time. I found this really cool product at REI and it's called a, uh, it's, it's, it's a co-op brand, Swiftland Running Joggers. Um, these are just about the perfect hiking pants. They have a four-way stre stretch material that's really robust, super lightweight. These things weigh hardly nothing. They have zippered, zippered leggings. The cool thing about these is, is the zip, the leggings are baggy. They're not, this is not a, uh, a slim fit, which is, I, which I like. Um, it's got a small zippered pocket in the back, but, uh, yeah, go check, go check this out. Uh, I highly, so far, highly recommend this. Um, wind pants. Again, I had took these out last year and a couple years before. This is the dance pants by body wrappers. You can buy this on Amazon. It's called body wrappers. I'm a, uh, I'm north of 200 pounds. I'm six foot tall. I got the extra large and they fit me perfectly. And what I've done with these um, is I go out, put them out, spray them down with a water repellency product to give them some more rain resistance. They're not rain pants, by the way, but they, uh, they do, they will obviously wet out over time, but uh, they, they crunch down into nothing. They weigh nothing. They're cheap. They're 24, $25 on Amazon and uh, cold days, cold nights. You put these on and you're, you're, you, you want something probably underneath them because they, they, you know, it's obviously a plastic type of, you know, polyester type product, but get yourself a pair of body wrappers, uh, rain mittens. These are the REI Gore-Tex rain mittens. These are the old style. They don't make this style anymore. They make an uh, improved new style. Last year I did, I had some possum down club gloves, never used them. So I'm only going to be taking these this year. Uh, beanie. I like these, the slightly lighter weight uh, beanie on my head rather than uh, the super heavy dingle ball at the end kind of beanies. I'm more partial to this. Um, let's, okay, let's continue. Um, outdoor research puffy. This is the Outdoor Research Super Strand LT hoodie. And um, super lightweight, super packable, very warm. It's not, it's not down, it's synthetic. So it's, it's, it's really, really a great product. I, go check this product out. This year I found something wonderful. I, I consider this a, a gold find. The North Face has uh, a product called Future Fleece. And what they've done is they've taken almost like an Alpha Direct 
grid. It's like an Alpha Direct 60. Now, at the, the, the grid base weight clothing really is meant to be worn on the inside, layered. In other words, there's a, an outer layer covering them because this, this is meant to trap air. So I, I kind of laugh a little bit when people wear the Alpha Direct product, especially the lighter versions on the outside and, and I'm just shaking my head. You know, they're not really using the product correctly, but to each his own, I guess. So what, what uh, North Face did is they took like an Alpha Direct 60 and they put a very lightweight fabric over the top of it. And so now you have a product that really performs like it should, and it's very lightweight. Um, yeah, this is the uh, North Face Future Fleece Full Zip Hoodie, I believe. Now I'm a big fan of full zip. I own many pullovers. I prefer the, the zip over the pullover or even a quarter zip or half zip. And the reason, because when you're on trail and it's cold in the morning, you can open this, this guy all the way up and regulate heat much better than if you had something you gotta take your pack off and you gotta pull it off. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a much bigger fan of full zip uh, ultralight uh, fabrics and uh, or clothing, clothing uh, options. Uh, last year I had the Patagonia Houdini wind hoodie, um, taking another one on trail with me. Um, I recommend this highly. This is a great product. It weighs nothing. It packs into its own little pocket. So it's basically this big and uh, great product guys. Go, go, go get yourself a Patagonia Houdini wind, wind hoodie. Unbelievable. Great product. Uh, indispensable is a rain jacket. You have to have one on trail. It protects you. It can, it can actually save your life in some circumstances with, from hypothermia. This is the Outdoor Research Helium rain jacket. I took it on trail last year, used it. it was great, very small, very minimalistic. Great product, guys. Get yourself some down booties for sleeping. They're basically like giant socks with, made of down. And I bought these several years ago. These are Aegis Max. You might be able to still get this product. Um, all, everybody makes them now. Not meant for walking in. I wouldn't walk in these, you'll destroy them. But these are meant for sleeping. And if your feet are freezing, you slip them in this product and you're good. They pack down into nothing. They weigh almost nothing. Um, yeah, get yourself some down booties, sleeping booties, that is. Okay, shoes for this year. Uh, last year, I started out with Ultra Timps, quickly destroyed them. Uh, <laughs> well, it was a lot of post holing uh, in March of 2023 PCT northbound hiking season. So... Um, yeah, I ripped them up pretty quick and then I replaced them with Topos in Idlewild and, um, the thing that was the Topo Terra Adventures, great shoe, by the way, these are the Topo, um, pursuits. And, um, so I'll, I'll, I'm actually wearing a pair right now. I've been wearing a pair for two or three months just to get my feet totally used to wearing these. Um, inside I have the... Super feet green hike insoles. Definitely put insoles in if, I mean, I do. They just, they're, they're worth it. And then for my gaiters, I have Dirty Girl gaiters that I bought years and years ago. These are the snake skin gray pattern. I don't even know if you can get this pattern anymore. Um, so I'm going to be taking that along. Camp shoe. Um, I, found, I found an awesome camp shoe, guys. I don't know if you can get it where you're at. Maybe you can. And that's these right here. I'm not a fan of the flip-flop between the, the big toe binding. I like the uh, over the top of the foot much better. Now, I, these are size 13s, okay? And they, they're super lightweight, guys. And they're Velcro, they look cool. This is the, this is the product here. Uh, I think Outdoor Warehouse had, has had these. And I went ahead and bought like three or four pair of these. Um, so see if you can find the, uh, Tamarack, um, 
uh, sandals. Great, great camp shoe, super lightweight. Matter of fact, the lightest I could find that I've been searching for on and off for three years. Socks, don't mess around. Stay with the best, don't, don't, go, any, don't go anywhere else. Just stick with darn tough hike trek socks and in Jinji uh, trail socks or the liners. You can get the the Jinji liners and put those on and to put this on top. Um, the, I've tried several others. Sorry, this is the best. You might as well stay with it. And then I also found an actual waterproof sock. I tried probably three others, and they were terrible. This is probably the best waterproof sock on the market right now. It's by Leak Dry, and I wear a uh, normal size 12 shoe. So I went ahead and ordered the extra large and it come, they come in different sizes. There's calf high, there's, there's crew, crew height and so on. And these things fit me perfect. They actually feel like a sock guys. They actually, they actually feel like a sock. And um, if you're worried about slogging through cold water and snow and that, get yourself a pair of these. Uh, really impressed with this product guys. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, reset and talk about some more stuff. Okay, here is my cook kit. Uh, this is different than last year. Actually, this is different than all the previous years. Uh, obviously, it's a cook kit though, so. Um, really cool. I am gonna be rocking the Vargo Bot 700. Um, it's titanium. It has a screw top with an O-ring. So it actually is sealable. There's an O-ring ar around the rim so that you can cold soak uh, with this product, which is really cool. 700 milliliters, uh, nice size. All my stuff fits inside it. Um, we're gonna go through that right now. Um, so let's just, Take everything out and I'll go through each one. Um, okay, this is the 700 milliliter titanium pot with lid. Um, when you're cooking, you can actually put the lid upside down like this and check your contents if it's boiling or not. Um, obviously, you don't want to put your lid down like this, uh, and um, that would be counterintuitive. Around the outside is just a, uh, rubber, a giant rubber band made out of silicone. And all I'm doing there is to keep the, uh, the fold-out handle from getting caught on anything. I am bringing along uh, extra O-ring for the pot. You can buy these online. Uh, they weigh nothing. And if this thing decides to eat itself uh, along my uh, through hike, I can easily replace it. Um, usually uh, I carry this size can with me. Um, This is the Snow Peak Gigapower can. So if you go into REI or some type of outfitter uh, and they carry different cans uh, from different manufacturers, um, look, look at the difference. Not, they're not all created equal. This one is, I believe, has the most amount of gas on the market, or one of them. There's actually more gas in this one than other brands. So you can, you can see, uh, if you look closely, how much gas is actually in here. It's, it's marked on the outside. That usually goes inside. I do have a folding titanium spoon that locks like this. Um, breaks down. Really neat. I have... Uh, a little lip saver that goes on the outside like this. So if you're drinking hot liquids, it won't burn your lips. This is pretty standard stuff. 
small little lighter. Could be one of these small little Bics or a bigger one, doesn't matter. Um, various uh, towels. So basically I cut a Swedish sponge as well as a one of these uh, disposable, like it's almost like a small ShamWow, if you know what a ShamWow is. Um, and the reason why I cut them in circles so they fit in, into the uh, round shape of the can perfectly. And there's really a reason. One, I could use these to clean up, but it's mostly to keep every, the, all the contents in the can from rattling around. Um, and I'll, show, I'll, I'll reassemble the uh, pot in a minute. And then I have another small section of towel that I take with me. This is for cleaning it. Wipe, and these things get water on them. You have it in the dirt and because the temperature of the can changes while your flame is, is coming out of it. Uh, it gets condensation, you can wipe the condensation. Um, if you do put your can on the bottom of this without some type of barrier, you're gonna get rust in here. So that's one of the reasons why I cut a circle to put at the bottom is to stop the, can, the gas can from getting in contact with the titanium bottom of my uh, pot, okay? A little, little cut down scrub, a uh, little scrubber. Again, it's a li little bit of abrasive. Okay, and then my actual stove, for years I've used the BSR uh, little stove. You can, you can, everybody's got one of these. And um, it's very ultra light. It's probably one of the smallest ones on the market. And this is what it looks like. And the feet fold out. They're about $16 on Amazon. And they work great. There's a little O-ring inside there that, that you can get uh, replacements for. Um, so they used to ship them. They used to have them. Uh, they used to give you an extra one. Uh, I don't think they do that anymore. People love these or hate these. I've never had a problem with a single one. I own like three of these. Okay. Um, very lightweight. Now, I found something that I think is better than this. It looks exactly the same, but in my opinion, it's better. And that product is this one right here. It's Gas One uh, backpacking stove. You can get it on Amazon. It's like $16. It's little container, instead of having a cinchy bag, is this plastic container here and you open it up and inside it looks almost identical to the BSR one. But the cool thing is with this one, the flame that this one shoots out is way more powerful uh, than this one. So you can see the difference. One has a red body. I'm gonna flash up a, uh, a picture I took comparing the, these two on full blast uh, using full cans, side-by-side -side comparison, and you'll see the difference. So if you want something to try new on trail, uh, that's ultralight and that is a little rocket, uh, go grab one of these before you get on trail. This will be my, my new uh, go-to. Um, again, this one has a little O-ring just like the BSR. Uh, that, that if, if it gets chewed up for some reason, you'll have to replace or gas will escape. So this is my new, and this is the replaceable O-ring. You can see it. So you can, you can buy, you can just type, you can just do a search for these little O-rings and you can get them on Amazon, I believe. Okay, let's reinstall um, my can, my, my, my pot. Um, again, so what I usually do is have the Swedish, little Swedish sponge cut out on the bottom. And that goes down on the bottom like this. 
Then I put my can on top of that. And now my can is totally separated from the bottom of the pot so no rust develops. Then I take my little scrubby thing, put it to the side. It fits in there perfectly. Um, this, this will go in the top part of the can like that. And then I just start assembling it. I put the uh, lip protector in, lighter. Um, so that's not going. And this is what I have. Screw the can together, put the uh, giant <laughs> rubber band around it. And if you do, if you do this little, little hack, for, for, just make sure your rubber band is, is on there, but not so tight that you damage your pot, okay? These are easily damaged. They're, they're, very, they're very thin, so, and that's it. There's my completely, completely contained cook system for this year, for the 2024 hiking season. Um, my Vargo Titanium Bot 700. Um, this is what I consider essential for the most part. And then I have some optional things I'll, I'll go over too that might be interesting taking along, add weight to your pack, but you know what? You're out there to have fun. So you take what you, you want to take. You, 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 you get your ditties together and you take them. Okay. Uh, in no particular order, I'm just going to pull stuff out and talk about it real quick. Okay, medicine. Um, I consider these medicines essential. Um, the upset stomach chew tabs. These are the Pepto-Bismol. Pepto-Bismol chew tabs. I did use them last uh, hiking season in the 2023 PCT season, as well as I shared them with some of my trail family that, uh, you know, you, you eat junk on trail and you get an upset stomach and you chew down to two of these and you're, you're, you're doing pretty good after that. Um, Imodium. This is just repackaged in pill box or a pill bag. Um, Imodium for any kind of... Uh, bathroom emergencies. No one wants to be caught on trail with uh, a case of diarrhea. Uh, vitamin I, ibuprofen. Um, I've uh, used a lot of this on trail in the past years. I'm trying to get away from it. Um, it really kind of messes with your, your gut biome. Uh, so I'm, my goal is to use less and less of this. And then uh, Benadryl, this is for um, obviously any kind of allergic reaction. If you're out in the middle of the trail and you get stung by a bee or you eat something that doesn't agree with you and you're having some type of allergic reaction, this can, uh, this can save your bacon, so to speak. Anti-chafing, uh, Body Glide, this is their little mini. Um, absolutely essential. Don't, don't go on trail. Don't do a long distance trail without some type of anti-chafing product. Uh, ear swabs. This is just a few of them. I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 in here. They weigh nothing. They're very lightweight. And I do like to uh, keep my ears clean. So I take a few of these with me, at least to start out. Uh, repackaged, pro two products here. One is the um, triple antibiotic cream. And then the other one's Athlete's Foot Cream. And they're in two little tiny little containers that I've repackaged. Um, any kind of foot issues on trail, it can be very painful. I've had foot issues on trail and uh, in the Sierras back in 2018, and it was no fun. So definitely take something like this with you. Uh, an extra bottle top with two of the Sawyer um, 
gaskets inserted. Uh, again, weighs nothing, takes up very little space. I do use the Sawyer Squeeze products. So if I happen to lose one, or if one of my trail family uh, loses one, I have a couple in here, one's inside there. Here's the other one. Again, they just pop them in and they got a nice little kit here. Uh, a tiny one-use tube of crazy glue repackaged so in case it leaks uh, it's inside but it's one of these one-use crazy glue tubes uh, homemade miniature sew kit there is uh, extra tough thread which is upholstery thread one needle and a thimble and that's it and I did use my um, homemade kit last year, so it did come in handy. And I do recommend you make something like this for yourself. Gluco tape, blister prevention. I have uh, two things of tape here, repackaged and wound on a plastic ultralight form. So um, basically, I have Luco and Hampton's Falla. Luco's stickier. Uh, which is great. Um, Hamptons is, is almost exactly the same product, Hamptons Falla. Um, it's just a little bit less sticky and they're both excellent products. I used a lot of this on trail. So take, take more than you think you need. Some people wind it around their trekking poles or whatever form they want and just throw it in their ditty bag. Highly recommended. Uh, nail clippers. Toothpaste, some people like the tabs. I like the, the little thing here. Toothbrush, this little thing on it has, it's just a bristle protector, that's all it is. I, t I just cut some of the handle off, very lightweight. Um, hairbrush, if you can find this, I recommend you get it. Um, it is super ultra lightweight, great bristles, folds up. I'm not sure where I found this, but I love it. This thing's a great hairbrush. Tweezers. This is Tweezer Man. Uh, highly recommend taking t some type of tweezers with you. If you have the uh, uh, Swiss Army knife, that has the tweezers that barely work. Okay, so be it, but I like a really good pair of tweezers on trail. Um, so I chose this one. Um, extra emergency guy outline for my tent. This is, uh, I don't know, several feet of it. And um, so if I need, my tent needs an extra guy outline. Again, very lightweight. I just repackaged it. I uh, had some really, I had a couple really rough nights uh, last hiking season and uh, man, I didn't think my tent was going to make it. It was super windy. Um, sunblock, I highly recommend you take some form of sunblock. I prefer this brand. It's more of a chemical barrier than the, than, uh, or a uh, zinc barrier uh, rather than a, a toxic chemical barrier. Um, this is Z blocks, clear zinc. This is a two ounce, two ounce squeeze bottle tube. I, I mean, I couldn't find the two ounce anymore. Um, you can find the four ounce, but this size is a little, was a little, was, uh, easily found last year. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I put this all over my nose and part of my face that pokes out. Um, otherwise it just gets sunburned to heck. So highly recommended. Um, Band-Aids, diff couple different sizes. Um, I've got probably three different size Band-Aids in here. And it's just a, in a little snack bag um, and a couple uh, disposable triple antibiotic tubes in here that you can use once. That's it, just a little bit of little Band-Aids. Uh, repair kit, uh, repackaged. Uh, I have a couple, well, three different things in here. Um, I highly recommend you get this product. This is the Tear Aid Patch Type A. 
Now there's type A and type B. Type A uh, will patch your, your uh, sleeping pads, your blow up sleeping pads, as well as your water bottle, like your B-free uh, flexible water bottle for the B-free uh, water filtration system. This will also patch that too, rather than sticking some like duct tape on it or, or something. Um, and then I have, I have some tenacious tape uh, patches, circles. Um, I also have a Dyneema, little Dyneema patch kit for my uh, Z-Pax tents. Um, definitely used this last year in my duplex. My duplex took a beating last year and there was definitely some, some patching that needed to be done. Um, this year I'm, I plan on taking my uh, Z-Pax Ultiplex, which is a Dyneema tent. And then just a couple uh, alcohol prep pads um, just to clean the area. And then a couple different, different sizes of the uh, Tenacious Tape Patch. So that's my uh, repair kit. And again, it's just repackaged um, in a little bag. That's it. Uh, this is um, Velcro. One, one, uh, one of the hook side, one of the felt side. And very lightweight, I mean, weighs nothing. Um, I'm taking this along mainly um, because the shoes uh, that I'll be wearing this year uh, don't have a gator, Velcro gator trap in the back like the Ultras do. So I end up by having to, to cut a piece of this and gluing one section onto the back of my shoes to complete the, uh, the shoe gaiter. So I'll be taking that. Uh, a couple extra uh, pill bags. You can get these almost anywhere. Walmart, Walmart has them. And they're just little pill bags. And then last year, I took along a disposable ultralight uh, scalpel. And you can get these online on Amazon.com. Just do a search for disposable scalpel and this little product will, will come up somewhere. Um, I did use this last year, um, cutting out some, uh, some patches for my tent. Uh, so it did actually, I did actually use this product. Uh, normally my knife is going to be the Victorinox uh, little knife. But this thing is so small and so lightweight. I mean, literally, it's, you know, a couple grams. Um, I did have some ankle issues. I've never had ankle issues in my life hiking. But I, uh, I, had, I had a swollen ankle twice on my right foot. And the, the two times it did happen is when I was uh, very heavy. I had four plus liters of water in my pack, plus five and a half, six days of food. And my right ankle just wasn't happy and it, sw and it, sw and it swelled up. So I'm going to be taking this sports um, ink, uh, wrap stuff with me. It's very lightweight um, and it's reusable and it grabs a hold of itself. Uh, so I'll be taking some, either this or something like it. And all I did is smoosh it down and so it'll fit in with my stuff. So that is my essentials that fit in a quart bag. Now the other stuff I'm going to talk about is maybe some fun stuff to bring along that you don't really need, that I figure you don't need. But probably I won't be taking this with me. Um, and if, if I do, I might take just one or two. So let's get into this one. I like trying out new products on trail. Um, this is Dude Chip. Excuse me, Dude Shower um, by Dude Wipes. And sometimes I'll take a packet of this on trail just to try it out. Um, maybe I might take another thing of vitamin I. This is just a little vitamin I, just depends. Um, a large compressed uh, towel. This is like a, uh, like a trail towel that you add water to and it expands. I might take this with me. Um, some fire making uh, tinder. I do like making uh, 
campfires on trail every once in a while. And these are very lightweight. I might take a couple of these with me, even though I have a whole bag here. Uh, extra sports water bottle cap. I might take an extra one of these with me. Just depends. I have broken uh, a, ta a top like that before on trail. The, the, the hinge is so delicate that if you're not careful, you can break this little thin plastic uh, hinge. Um, but it can be repaired. You can put a piece of tape on it to bolster it. Uh, I might take a little, little tiny thing of deodorant. Uh, I have done it in the past. Uh, it does weigh a little bit though, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be taking that. Uh, I don't know if you know what this is. Uh, it looks like a, like, a, like a pen, but it's not. It's called a mouth bellow. This is kind of fun if you're into uh, fire making. What it is, is it allows you, extends it, you extend it like this, and it allows you to, uh, to blow into the fire to start a fire. Uh, I have used this before. Uh, it's kind of fun, it weighs a little bit. Uh, I was in uh, doing the John Muir Trail and it rained on us and I, I was able to get a, a roaring fire started with wet everything. So this came in handy. Might not take it with me, just a little extra fun thing to have. And then some other odds and ends, you know, maybe uh, some twist ties, just for whatever reason. I do like uh, sometimes taking an inhaler on trail to open up my, uh, my uh, nose. So this is uh, an old bass, an old bass product. I cut it down. Um, maybe some, this is a, uh, Z-Pax product. It's a little uh, tie product with the uh, uh, tie slider. Sometimes you, you, you want stuff like little odds and ends. Um, and that's about it. These are just maybes. You, you just kind of figure out some things to take. All right, so those are my, uh, my ditties. And then we'll go into... Uh, I suffer from fatigue on trail. Um, and so I take products on trail to help me deal with it. Um, caffeinated products, preferably, sometimes definitely electrolytes. This product I recommend, um, I bought probably four or five of these uh, last year and um, I was amazed at how well this uh, energy powder worked. They come in, in these packets. They also come in bulk. You can buy, but I don't, I can't see myself taking a bulk product, but these packets work really well. The flavor's good. They do have caffeine in them, but boy, I tell you, when you're bonking, when you're running out of energy and you drink one of these down, you're ready to go. Um, <laughs> true story, my first trail family uh, that I hiked with out of Campo going north last year, I made, made the mistake of uh, sharing one of these with one of them and boy, he begged me for three more and said, I'll replace them when we get into the next uh, town. Well, he couldn't find the product, so he ended up by giving me inferior products and I sure miss these, but now, I mean, I mean, there's what, 20 in here? Yeah, there's 20 packs in here. And yeah, I'm taking these on trail. These will be in my resupply too. Um, I recommend trying, trying it out, try getting a packet. You can buy them separately. If you have like a Big R or a Shields um, outlet store ne next to you, some, some of the uh, uh, outdoor warehouse, things like that, they'll carry this product sometimes. And you can buy a single packet Try it to see if it agrees with you first. Don't just go buy this whole product. It might not agree with you. Okay, um, let's get into my fanny pack. I am a big proponent, uh, supporter and lover of fanny packs on trail. This is a product by Through Pack. I think this is the best fanny pack on the market. I've tried bunches of them. 
Um, and the reason why I love this, one, this is the Ultra 200 uh, uh, Classic. One is the, uh, the belt slides through the product. It's replaceable. The backside has this big padded area. And the reason why it's so important, uh, some of them you can't, they don't slide and they have supports on them that come out. And what happens is when you're wearing this thing in front of your groin and you're, and you're hiking and walking and stepping, this thing can articulate up and down, okay? Plus it has the, uh, the comfy strap on it, this wide, stretchy, uh, rather than just the webbing. And uh, I'm telling you, this thing, do yourself a favor. Go on through packs. Uh, website order this and and get it you'll love it um, so inside uh, I do carry items this goes with me everywhere on trail I don't leave it anywhere this has all my critical items like my wallet money credit cards ID glasses uh, things like that um, what I've done is on trail I take a large phone. This is my 20, uh, uh, Samsung S23 Ultra. Um, it's a great phone. Um, and I love it because it's got really high quality cameras on it. And, I, and there's a spot here for your phone to fit in. It fits in perfectly. Problem is, it has fallen out in the past. I, one time uh, a few years ago, I did lose my phone. And let me tell you, talk about stress. You're running back on trail looking for your $1,600 phone. <laughs> so what I've done is I modified uh, the fanny pack with this um, clip. Um, I don't know for a better word. Um, with the snap. And I, I went ahead and put holes in, the, in it and put this adjustable. Um, it's not shock cord. It's like shock cord. But this allows me to put my phone in and snap it and zip it down a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so my phone can't come out. I mean, it's, now it's, it's a perfect fanny pack. Uh, and I can also slide my phone out if I want. So it's a perfect fanny pack in this configuration. Okay, let's go inside. I do have my sunglasses. These are the Ombras um, armless sunglasses. And they have uh, cord instead of um, what the, the stuff that goes around your ears. Now these are very expensive glasses for what you get, okay? Um, are they super comfy? Yes. Um, are they, you know, super secure? Yes. Are they very high quality? Yes. Is it worth $160? No. Would I buy them again if I lost them? Yes. <laughs> I also uh, went and bought the uh, side shields for them. When I need them, I'll put them on. And uh, they go on the side like this. Um, so I will use them in the Sierras or, or wherever the uh, ultraviolets are super fierce. And yeah, it comes with this really cool little case. Um, I don't think they're worth 160, but they are really, really comfortable. And uh, so I guess I kind of recommend them. Um, I just wish they were not $160. I, I, I have a lot of sunglasses, very nice ones. And... Uh, I've never paid $160 for, for sunglasses before. But uh, yeah, so that, that, that'll always be with me. Um, these are my reading glasses and backup. I, uh, I need reading glasses. So I have a little adenium the bag. And these are some ultralight reading glasses. They're very small. I, don't, I think there's maybe 175s or two power and then inside i also have a backup it's the thin optics um and these just these just go over your nose bridge okay so i absolutely need 
reading glasses. Uh, it's very difficult for me to see anything up close. So I just bring uh, a backup. So these are my reading glasses. These will always be in my fanny pack because these are indispensable for, for people who need them. Uh, this will be my, uh, my wallet for this year. There's nothing in it. It's just a Dyneema uh, zippered bag. So I'll have money and credit cards and uh, possibly my uh, passport in here. Uh, a Sharpie. I'll bring, uh, normally I don't bring a Sharpie, but uh, this year I'm going to bring it just in case I need to make a sign or something. A uh, packaged microfiber towel. Very, very lightweight. This is for cleaning my glasses. Um, see, I actually have a, a packet of the uh, Mountain Ops Ignite in there. I'll, I'll usually carry more than one. Also, I usually carry some, some type of electrolyte. Uh, in the pow in my fanny pack, uh, a very lightweight plastic spoon in my fanny pack. Um, so a lot of times when I go into town, this is really strange. I go into town, and uh, my all my stuffs in their hotel or in the uh, the hostel or whatever. And I, I swear I, I'll go get food and there's no spoon. <laughs> so I I just decided I'm just going to carry a lightweight throw throwaway spoon. Uh, a cleaning, cleaning kit for, uh, actually this is anti-chafing, excuse me, anti-chafing, uh, one use packs. I carry that in there. Um, I have some bathroom. These are uh, compressible bathroom wipes. Um, let's see if I can get them out. And what you do, you add water to them and they expand and you can use these for cleaning yourself. I usually have this with me at all times in my fanny pack for obvious reasons. Um, when you're out and about and you're hundreds and hundreds of miles away from home, you, uh, you have to make sure you're clean. Uh, so that goes in there. And I have lip balm, a tiny little tube of lip balm. You carry whatever you like. This happens to be this product and of course the famous Victorinox little 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 knife and yet it has uh, scissors indispensable it's one of the main reasons why I have this little product because of these little scissors and it also has a blade and it has it has these little almost useless tweezers that's why I carry the better uh, product of tweezer because these I've tried using that. It's, and it has a little, um, little plastic toothpick. Should you carry this with you on trail? Absolutely, or something like it. Get the smallest one. They come in multiple different colors. You can get them almost anywhere. Um, and I think they're like between 20 and 25 bucks, maybe. Um, get this product and if you're only if you're not going to take a knife with you or scissors or whatever get this product so all this stuff's in my fanny pack and there's there is still more room in my fanny pack uh, as I get closer to uh, getting on trail sometimes you take uh, you know you take other items with you it's it, nothing sealed so to speak, no, um, when it comes to little objects and things you need. Okay, one last thing uh, up close, we're gonna get into my electronics bag. Um, this is a Dyneema zippered uh, pouch. And inside I have a charging brick. This has three ports. This charging brick uh, you can find on Amazon. It's 160 watts total. It's got the flip out, super desirable. Uh, USB-C and USB-A. Um, the two USB ports on top, I believe they can do 65 watts. 
And on the bottom, I believe it's like 18 or 20 watts. So I can, I can charge three devices at once with this if I need to. Um, yeah, it weighs a little bit, but um, if you take a camera, cell phone on trail, and Garmin, whatever, you, you, you really want a, something that'll charge up quickly. Okay, my uh, power brick is the Nightcore 2000 milliamp um, brick. Um, I had this last year. It'll charge and, and, and your device is at 45 watts. So it'll charge my phone up at, at uh, really fast speeds. Uh, it's heavy. Don't, get, don't, think, don't think it's not, but uh, I, I carried it for hundreds and hundreds of miles last year and I used it a lot. I used it every day. So that's what I'm carrying. Cables. Put my cables in another Dyneema bag. Um, and the cables, cables are pretty standard. They're, uh, they're, they're high wattage cables, probably, I don't know, 100, 100 watts each. But they have attachments on them. On, on Amazon, you can get all kinds of USB cable attachments. Like there's the USB-C, but then I have, I have this attachment that goes on so I can plug it in on any kind of port. On the other side, I have a right angle attachment for my phone in case I want to use it. Again, another attachment. Um, so you look, look for USB uh, attachments on Amazon and they have these kits you can buy. Um, they just, they, they up the value of your cables because they, you basically turn them into a Swiss army knife. Again, uh, this is a high powered cable. I think it's 200 Watts, maybe really good cable. Um, USB-C on both ends. And then my last cable has another adapter. This is goes from C to A. And there, there's the C end. And on the other end, I have my Garmin Phoenix 7 watch adapter. So this, this little thing will, 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 will charge my uh, Garmin watch. And so you can get this on, I get all this stuff on Amazon if you search. So I'll be, I will, last year I did bring my uh, Garmin Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar um, on trail. It's big, it's heavy, but it's an amazing watch. So there's my electronics. Um, I am this year going to bring an extra camera with me. I, I do own a GoPro. Uh, I'm filming on this on my um, Osmo Pocket 3. I'm going to take that on trail this year. If you're going to take something like an Osmo Pocket 3 on trail, just remember it's not an action camera. You have to protect it. It's not waterproof or dustproof. So if you're going to take something like uh, uh, that, you're going to need to protect it. Okay, so that, that's it for this part.